Welcome! Got my latest mini disc haul to show you. Couple from eBay, one from Discogs, and then after that I'm going to show you something else that's not a mini disc, but is rather more modern, so stay tuned for that near the end. Right, let's crack on. First I'm going to show you one of two mini discs that I won in eBay auctions. And it's probably the favourite of the three mini discs that I'm going to show you today. It's Apollo 440 Electro Glide in Blue. Now, I think this was their second studio album. Apollo 440, by the way, are an electronica big beat act. Quite big in the 90s, sort of turn of the millennium. I'd kind of fancied getting this album for quite some time. It's actually the second Apollo 440 album I've got in my collection. I've also got Getting High on Your Own Supply on minidisc. That's their third album. There's probably more well-known singles of theirs on the third album, but I would say this one, Electro Gliding Blue, was probably their breakthrough album as more of a mainstream act in the mid to late 1990s. This album came out in 1997. The single I remember off here, it's probably the only single that I really recognised. I'll just show you the mini disc there from this album was Ain't Talking About Dub. Ah, oh, one of my favourite singles, particularly in the dance genre of the 1990s. Got a really cool Van Halen sample in it. Fantastic stuff. Hopefully I'll be playing you a bit of that in a moment. So we have the nice price sticker on. That will bring back memories for a lot of people who bought music physically from places like R Price, Virgin Megastores, HMV, etc. in the 1990s. But Electro Gliding Blue, really enjoyed that. There we are, Apollo 440, Electro Gliding Blue, that cost about 20 something pounds. This seller on eBay seemed to be selling off a lot of mini discs and a bit on a fair few, but there was only two that I won. But fortunately, they were the two that I wanted the most out of all the ones this person was selling. <laughs> Right, so moving on to the other mini disc from this seller. Here is from 1999. This is Catatonia's, uh, I think this is their third album, Equally Cursed and Blessed. I was doing a little bit of research for this video. I was surprised that Catatonia broke up 20 years ago and they've not got back together since. I think the record label, or whoever has the rights to their music now, has maybe done a couple of compilations and re-released an early album in like an expanded or remastered format but i couldn't believe it that catatonia have been disbanded for 20 years now without any reformation or anything in that time um this is my first catatonia album i have owned catatonia music in my past years ago back in the 90s i had their single i am the mob on cd uh, but this is the first album of theirs I've got. My best friend Dan, he was a big Catatonia fan back in the day. I'm assuming he still is, but obviously they've not released any new music in 20 years. I think Catatonia's breakthrough and best known album is probably International Velvet. That's also out on minidisc, and I would like that on minidisc. That's the sort of thing I'm looking around for for a good price. This album, it was alright. Dead from the waist down, the lead single off it and track number one, that's okay. Londinium, track number two is okay. Uh, Postscript, number three, I don't think that come out as a single, but that was pretty good. It's your sort of standard post-Brit pop, maybe leaning more towards Brit rock. And then with Keris Matthews' distinctive gravelly Welsh accent that she sings in. Because she's Welsh, obviously. Hey there, geeks and geeks. Oh, anyway, never mind. And um, I'm glad I got it. Um, like I say, I think International Velvet, I'd probably enjoy that more. Because I know there's some really big singles off there, like Mulder and Scully. Road Rage, of course. And I Am The Mob. So, yeah, this was okay. This was 20-something as well. So, yeah, I think altogether, including postage, just under £50 paid for both Apollo 440 and Catatonia with Equally Cursed and Blessed. But out of the two from the same seller, I prefer Apollo 440. But this is fine. This is good. Not massively pitching my tent, but um, it's one for the collection. Let's wait till you see the next one, though. All 
Right, so it's that time when I show you my embarrassing mini disc purchase. I showed you three in the last one. Um, I got right roasted in the comments and in messages and stuff for buying the likes of Celine Dion and Ricky Martin. This one was actually a Discogs purchase. Very cheap and I made a best offer on it as well. You can make offers on certain listings on Discogs Marketplace if the seller has allowed you to. The trouble is, unlike eBay, where you get either three goes to make an offer, or up to five goes if it's an international listing, on Discogs Marketplace you can only make one best offer, and then if that's rejected, then that's it. If you want the thing, you have to buy it at the normal listed price. But I made a best offer on this, it was accepted, and um, yeah, here is Richard Blackwood with You'll Love to Hate This, and yeah, you certainly will. So this is on the East West label from 2000, Richard Blackwood, sort of around the late 90s, early noughties, he was, I wouldn't say ubiquitous, but he was quite a prominent MTV presenter, I think he'd done a bit of stand-up comedy, but nothing that ever entered my radar as it were. And then in 2000 he uh, decided he'd become a kind of a rapper, pop star sort of thing with a very sort of pop rap, Americanized, but you can tell he's not really American. He's a British guy, obviously. A lot of people will be more familiar with him in more recent years as a soap actor on things like EastEnders and Hollyoaks. As far as I know, is the only album he ever released. The singles off it did well. I think there were three singles off it and two of them got to the top 10, but I think the album completely bombed. I didn't even know this was out on minidisc until I saw that it was going cheap on Discogs. £7.50 for this, and then like another £4 or whatever in postage. So one of the more cheaper purchases that I've made in quite some time. But I'll buy pretty much anything on MD if it's going cheap. Usually, particularly on Discogs, if you see a lot of mini discs going quite cheap and you think, oh, they're pretty good artists, just make sure you check the information that the seller has put in because usually they'll be without the case or they'll be missing the booklet or something. So I always make sure that I check that everything's included packaging-wise. Yeah, I haven't really got anything good to say about Richard Blackwood or this album. In fact, Richard Blackwood, as far as I'm concerned, he'll always be remembered by myself, mostly, for this. So every time you kid tickle Panto, the paedophile gets his rocks off. And it doesn't stop there. Online paedophiles can actually make your keyboard release toxic vapors that make you suggestible. You know, I must say, I, I actually feel more suggestible. Now, here are the warning signs to show that your child might be in trouble. Are they upset? Do they smell odd? Weird question, but Hope's Games actually makes your child smell like hammers. Hope's Games actually makes your child smell like hammers. Smell like hammers. Smell like hammers. I can't believe that clip is now 20 years old. Well, doesn't time fly? Chris Morris, I fucking love you. Alright. <laughs> Can I say anything good about this? I remember when he was doing the round, the media rounds around the time this came out, 21 years ago. He was basically telling everyone, oh, I'm trying to be the British Will Smith, which to me is like, you're kind of setting yourself up to fail right from the start there, because you're not trying to establish yourself, your own name, you know, you're trying to piggyback off someone else. I sort of saw where he was coming from, because obviously Will Smith was getting to be a really big artist. Well, the music was dropping off, I think, by the early noughties, but of course he was becoming a really big um, Hollywood film star. A little look at the mini disc there, but nothing really to see. Very bland cover for this as well. And I just think, well, try and be successful on your own merits without saying, oh, I'm an equivalent of someone else who's always going to be a hundred times more successful than me. But anyway, that's by the by. But needless to say, he didn't become the British Will Smith, unless um, Will Smith turns up in Coronation Street one day. <laughs> but uh, Richard Blackwood, he's an alright actor, you know, if you watch the soaps. I think he's found his niche, really. I think, by all accounts, his stand-up comedy was the shits. And um, apart from an unintentionally hilarious appearance on Brass Eye, I don't particularly like his music either. But I'm happy to have got that for under a tenner. So 
So that was my mini disc haul, and uh, I don't want to end on something as crap as Richard Blackwood's album. So let's change tack and look at a compact disc that I've bought. Yes, I don't show CDs overly often on this channel, mainly because I don't buy an awful lot of CDs. I do still collect them though, mainly for the artists that I've always collected on CD, such as this artist here, New Order. And this is the Be A Rebel Remixes set. Now, whether this is classed as an album or as a single, I'm not sure because there's way too many tracks on it to be a single. Um, there's actually 13 tracks on here and they're all the same. It's all Be A Rebel, which was New Order's first new single in some years that came out last year. And then it took like about a year for this Remixes CD to come out. And the Remixes are also out on 12 inch double vinyl. Um, I've got the original 2020 Be A Rebel on 12 inch single as um, that was the only physical format the first Be A Rebel last year came out on. But I thought with this remix set I'll get it on CD as I do have a very many New Order singles on compact disc. And even though it's the same track and a lot of the versions are very similar, I put this on start to finish, loved it, but I think that's because I just love Be A Rebel, I love this single. When it came out, and I talked about this when I showed the initial 12-inch Be A Rebel single in a video last year, I said that it was quite divisive for hardcore New Order fans when it came out. People either really liked it or they just thought, no, it's lacking Hooky's bass or it's just a bit kind of generic or whatever. Me personally, I think it's their strongest single in many, many years. And I love pretty much everything that they do. So I know they've released a lot of strong singles, certainly the 80s, 90s and noughties. Maybe the singles from Music Complete, their most recent album, weren't necessarily my overall favourites, but I think this was a real return to form, Be A Rebel. So yeah, 13 mixes of the same track on here, but I still found it an enjoyable listen. You know, 13 tracks, that's longer than most albums, to be honest. I'll just quickly show this package in here. This is on Mute Records, which have been New Order's label since 2015. This nice sort of pocket deal to put the CD in and it opens out in a sort of gatefold manner. Absolutely marvellous that, just thought I'd show you that along with the mini discs to round this video off. So there we are, that was three mini discs from Apollo 440, Catatonia and Richard Blackwood. That's an eclectic trio if ever there was one. And a CD single or remix album compilation, it's difficult to categorise this other than say it's on compact disc. New Order's Be A Rebel Remixes, I can highly recommend that, particularly if you're a New Order fan. If you're a New Order fan you probably know about it anyway. So that's it for me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at some additions to my music collection today. Special thanks go, as always, to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons. My Patreon link and my Facebook group link, they are, of course, down in the description below. Please check them out. I'm going to go now, and I have listened to all these, but I think the one that I want to listen to again, all the way through, got to be Be A Rebel. The single of 2021 for me, this. I was going to say the single of 2020, but I think my favourite single of 2020 is still Avalanche by Picture Plane, which is still my intro theme. I will go now, do that, listen to that, and I do hope you all join me again next time for my next mini disc and CD collecting video. Cheers, everyone. See ya!